You know, marriage is God's idea. Marriage is from God. It's actually supposed to be for God, between a man and a woman. And because that's the case, because God created marriage, it takes God to make marriage work in the best way. And so today we gather together in the sight of God, in the sight of friends and family, to celebrate and affirm this covenant that has been made in marriage. No better way to start this ceremony than with a word of prayer. Will you please bow your heads with me in reverence to God. Almighty God, you have made everything for us and for your glory. And right now, Lord, we ask that you would set apart this moment, that you would help us to honor you and to glorify you because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you that you've made a way for us to be in an unhindered relationship with you through Jesus Christ. We proclaim his name in this way. And Lord, right now, we thank you for Jason and Desiree. We thank you for the family and friends who have shaped and molded them uh, to be the people that they are. We thank you for everything that's present here, all the people, all the stories, all the relationship. And we ask that everything from this point forward would bring honor and glory to your name. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Now, this ceremony is different than most marriage ceremonies. You may have asked yourself the question, now why are we here? I've heard that they're married, and I'm going to address that right from the get-go so that we can move on. Okay, are you ready? Is everybody with me? All right. <laughs> you know, this, this ceremony is unique because this couple in March actually declared themselves husband and wife in, in March through a vow ceremony. And many of you were there. I actually thought that that was going to be five people. Desiree told me there's going to be five people there. I show up and there's 25 of these handsome men and handsome, beautiful um, ladies that were there. It was a wonderful time. So you, again, may be asking the question, why are we doing this today? And let me tell you something. The ceremony that happened between Jason and Desiree in March was actually about them and their commitment to God. You see, it was many years ago that they came together. And then it was a year ago that they came to an understanding that they needed God to make their marriage work, to make their relationship work. And so they began to set things right between themselves and God and in their relationship. And in March, it became very, very clear that even though the date was already set for September for today, it became very, very clear that the right decision for this couple between them and God and for their family was to go ahead and and give themselves to each other with vows and rings as symbols. So again, you might ask, why are we here today? Well, March was about them and God. And I would submit to you today that this ceremony today is really more than anything about you. It's about sharing this moment with you. It's about coming together and saying, we want you to know the commitment that they have made in marriage together before God. So isn't that a beautiful thing? So if we think back to all of the stories of this couple's life, and we think back about the struggles and the trials, we think back about the good times and the times of laughter, the times of hanging out around football games and, and hanging out at home with, with friends. If you've been around this couple, you know that their commitment and their bond to each other is authentic. It's genuine and it's strong. It's not fake or artificial. How many of us know that a fake or artificial commitment in marriage won't last very long? Because marriage has to be built on more than a fleeting romance. It has to be built on love. It has to be built on commitment and devotion. And both Desiree and Jason are to bring this relationship under submission to God's design for marriage. And so Jason and Desiree, the steps that you take and have taken since March are really from this day forward and from that day forward no longer on your own. Christ is the one that will carry this relationship through the difficult times and bring it to the times of celebration as he has today. And now because of their commitment to Christ and to each other, I bear witness that this marriage is not being entered into or has been entered into thoughtlessly or irreverently, but advisedly, deliberately, and in the love of God. Jason and Desiree now come to be joined, and let them also bear witness. So Jason, will you have this woman to be your wedding wife? 
to live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of marriage? Will you love her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health as long as you both shall live? And Desiree, will you have this man to be your wedded husband? To live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of marriage. Will you love him, honor him, and keep him in sickness and in health so long as you both shall live? I think the question that many of us have asked when we've been married, when we've been in close relationships is, how do we stay strong together? How do marriages stay strong together? How do they endure the trials of life? And so for a few moments, from my heart to you guys' hearts, to the, to the rest of the people in this room, I want to offer up three things that I believe to be essential to a healthy, lasting, and vibrant marriage. Because that's what God intended for marriage to be. The first characteristic of a godly marriage is the ability to cling to God so that you can cling to each other. You see, a strong, lasting, and vibrant marriage is built on God's love. And in the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 through 7 says this. It says this about love. Listen to how beautiful and how complex love is. Listen to how it carries over into every area of life. Listen to this description of love. It says that love is patient. It says that love is kind. It says it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And it always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, and it always perseveres. You see, God's love is a threefold love. It's a love that involves friendship. First of all, friendship with Him. Friendship with the person of Jesus Christ. Acknowledging Him as our Lord and Savior. And realizing that there is a loyalty, there's a faithfulness in our relationship with God. And so the same can be said for marriage. How many of us know marriage will not last very long without friendship? People say every good relationship starts with friendship. And I think the truth can be said about your marriage, that it needs to be built on a sound, loyal friendship that loves each other in the good times and in the bad times, when you're at your best and when you're not at your best. The second is passion. This is a, a part of God's love that we see in Scripture. It's an intimacy. As a matter of fact, God shows us His passion in the way that He comes after us, in the way that He saved us. And so that is to be a characteristic in the way that we love each other in marriage. We're supposed to love each other intimately and passionately. There's a spark that God will give you for your spouse. Desiree, there's a spark that God will give you for Jason and Jason for Desiree that is only meant to burn for each other. And it's a beautiful thing. And it's intimacy in the most intimate way. And number three is sacrifice. You see, sacrifice is something that in, in many ways is very difficult for us. I think in today's society, we look at marriage as more like a contract than a covenant. And contract is a word that we use all the time because everybody has a cell phone, don't we? Everybody has a cell phone and, you know, there are some cell phone companies that don't do contracts anymore, but we all know what they are. And we live in a day and age where marriages are broken more than cell phone contracts. But I'm going to submit to you today, God's idea of sacrificial, loyal, and intimate love is supposed to be in marriage. And this is the kind of love that's more like a covenant love. It's a love that doesn't give up. It's a love that doesn't think about the relationship as a contract, but rather as a covenant, as a deep soul tie to one another. So if you cling to God, I believe in these three ways you will be able to cling to each other. And probably one of the most important steps that I've taken in, in my relationship with my wife, now being married for coming up on six years, I've noticed that I don't know about any of you in this room or about you, Jason, or about you, Desiree, but 
it's pretty easy to have a disagreement with your spouse, right? It's easy to, to always be right if you're the man, right? We're always right, aren't we? And every smart man in the room says, no, she's always right. You see, I think when it comes to communication, we're afraid of fighting, but I'll submit to you today that I believe every marriage will endure conflict. And it's how we approach that that makes the difference. So I submit to you again this second step, which is don't fight to win. Fight for the relationship. You see, it's our tendency to want to fight to win. It's our tendency to want to have the last word. It's our tendency to want to one-up the other one. But if you have the relationship in mind, maybe you would hold your words. Maybe you would forgive more freely. Maybe you would think more about the relationship than about the win. And number three, which is very intimate on you guys' part, and it's very specific to each one of you, in addition to clinging to God so that you can cling to each other, in addition to not fighting to win, but fighting for the relationship, I want to encourage you to remember your role. And we've talked about this in our time together. Jason, your role is one of high caliber. Every man of God is called to be the leader of his home spiritually. Now, she'll lead in some ways in the home. And as a matter of fact, she'll probably be better at you at leading in some ways in the home. But spiritually, God has called that responsibility on you. And Jason, I want to I want to tell you and encourage you that when I have had the time together to get to know you in a better way, I've noticed this. And even in how these men up here relate to you, I've noticed this. That you're a good man. You're a good man. You're a faithful man. You're a loyal man. And you're a great friend. And you are already a great husband. And I know you're going to fail. You know you're going to struggle. You know you're going you're gonna to stumble. You know that you're going to say things you shouldn't. So I want to ask you in all of those things, stay humble before God. Be humble and He will lift you up, the Bible says. Don't be proud. Fight for the relationship. God's with you, my brother. And Desiree, you're a strong woman. You're one of conviction, one of character. And as a matter of fact, you have a, a, a way about you that is, that is charming to the girls that hang out with you. They all love you dearly. Some of them said that you're crazy, and that's awesome. That's a good attribute. People love you that are close to you. And as a couple, people love you guys. But just as Jason has a role, you have a role. You have a role that's called wife and mother. And that shouldn't be taken lightly. As a wife and a mother, you're called to respect your husband with a deep admiration. You're called to raise your children together with your husband, not being harsh with them in your anger, but loving them and correcting them according to God's truth. Desiree, I have full confidence in your ability to fulfill this role. And I believe you will do it gracefully as you seek God, as you humble yourself, and as you follow your husband spiritually. It doesn't mean that that's the way that it happens in every marriage, but I believe that's the way that Scripture tells us God intended it to be. And when it's working well, with the husband being the leader spiritually, and the wife following, submitting, but also straightening out when he needs to be straightened out, that's the best way for it to work. And she said that's not a problem. <laughs> so as each of you are committed to God, connected to His love, you will be empowered to love each other as husband and wife, truly in the way that he's intended. And now for the exchanging of vows, starting with the group, please repeat after me. I, Jason. I, Jason. In the presence of God in this gathering. In the presence of God in this gathering. Take you, Desiree. Take you, Desiree. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. I promise to be. I promise to be. A loving and faithful husband. And pledge to you, and pledge to you, my unselfish devotion, my unselfish devotion, and tender care. And tender care. I promise to love, I promise to love, honor, honor, and cherish you, and cherish you, in a life of faith, in a life of faith, in 
Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. And now Desiree, repeating after me. I Desiree. I Desiree. In the presence of God in this gap. Take you, Jason, Take you, Jason. To, be my to be my wedded husband. I promise to be, promise to be a, loving a loving and faithful wife and pledge to you, pledge to you my, unselfish devotion my unselfish devotion and tender care. And I promise to love, promise to love honor, honor, and cherish you, and cherish you in, a life of faith in a life of faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus. For better or worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live. And now for special music and the pouring of unity sand, and the giving of roses, and the couple's communion together. I've been a walking party, I've made a mess of me. The person that I've been lately ain't who I wanna be, but he stay here right beside me and watch as the storm blows through and high.
bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, grant that Jason and Desiree may have a true and understanding love for each other, and that it would grow every single day. Lord, I pray that you would cover this couple, that you would strengthen their faith. May they live and bear with each other's weaknesses and grow from each other's strengths, Lord. I pray that you would just build in this young man, Jason, to be a godly and strong leader. Lord, I bless him now with the ability to understand your truth, to walk for you, and to learn what it means to be a warrior for God in his home. Lord, I thank you for Desiree. I thank you for this young woman of conviction, of character, that desires to do right before you. Lord, I pray that you would continue to make her heart tender for you and for others, as you've called us to love you and to love others. Lord, thank you for this couple. Use them as they parent, as they, as they minister to friends, as they care for each other. Lord, always remind them of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. And now that Jason and Desiree have given themselves to each other in vows and with rings as symbols, we celebrate that they are husband and wife. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Jason, you may kiss your bride. And now stand facing. And depart now with the peace of God resting upon you, with the love of Christ dwelling in you. Depart with the presence of the Holy Spirit abiding in you. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. It is my privilege now to announce and to continue to celebrate with you here, Mr. and Mrs. Jason Kaibos.